What's going on everyone? It's Chip Walton. I'm here at Northern Brewer HQ once again, and I would like to introduce you to my little friend, FirmCap S. Oh, you don't know FirmCap S? Well, you should, because it's one of the most handy tools to have in your home brewer's toolbox for fighting foam. And I'm about to show you four ways it can make life easier and less messy on brew day, during fermentation, even with yeast starters. First, a quick look at the tech specs. FirmCap S, also referred to as just FirmCap, is a non-soluble anti-foam agent that generally comes in a one ounce eyedropper style bottle. It's a silica polymer used by brewers to control foaming in the kettle and during fermentation. It does this by breaking the surface tension of the wort and collapsing the foam. It is food safe and non-toxic and its shelf life is nearly infinite as long as you keep it refrigerated and remember to always shake it well before use. As weird as it might look going into your wort, Firm Cap will have no negative effects on the final beer as long as you properly follow all usage guidelines on the packaging. Before we look at the several ways Firm Cap can save your brew day, if you want to see more FAQ and product demo videos like this from Northern Brewer, be sure to like, subscribe, and share this video. Now let's fight some foam. The first place Firm Cap comes in handy is in helping to prevent a boil over on brew day. Whether you brew extract or all grain, I'm sure we all share the same fear of the dreaded and potentially dangerous boil over, especially if you're pushing the volume limit of your kettle. As the sugar filled wort comes up to a boil, you'll generally see foam starting to form on the surface. This is caused by proteins in the malt foaming as the wort reaches a boil. Wort and water also contain dissolved gases that are forced out of solution with heat, which is another reason why they are prone to boil over. If this foam and the quickly rising wort temperature go unchecked, you are setting the scene for what could be an epic boil over. This is made all the more risky with the first addition of hops as those hops create even more nucleation points to further surge the foam. At this point, if you drop the recommended amount of firm cap into the kettle and stir it, you'll see the foam dissipates rather quickly. As the wort comes up to a full boil, there will be less foam than you're probably used to seeing. Also, as you add your first hops, you'll definitely notice less aggressive post-hop foaming. To further cut down on the chance of a boil over, some brewers suggest first wort hopping, or at the very least adding a few pellets of your bittering hop addition along with the anti-foam agent to help get the wort acclimated to those new hop oils slowly instead of in one huge burst. You can also use firm cap at the end of your brew day. Here, you might have aerated your wort by shaking the fermenter vigorously or oxygenated the wort using pure oxygen with a sintered stone and wand. Either of these methods will likely kick up a layer of foam inside the fermenter. Some home brewers prefer to knock this foam down before pitching the yeast, especially a dry yeast, so that the yeast goes directly into the wort instead of sitting on top of the foam for a while. Drop the recommended amount of firm cap on the foam and stir gently with a sanitized spoon. As you can see from this Legend of Lutra extract beer kit, the foam collapsed fairly quickly and left the surface of the wort flat and foam free. Now pitch the yeast and you're ready to rock and roll. Speaking of rocking and rolling, this brings us to possibly the most popular use of firm cap, and that is to keep rambunctious fermentation from creating an aggressive amount of croissant or foam, possibly blowing out of your fermenter. What you see here is an extreme example of a double pitch of yeast in a high gravity beer, our thialized swig of sunbeams. That combo made an absolute monster of a mess. Even with a less intense fermentation, you might find croissin still at risk of blowing off and out of your fermenter or causing a clog in your airlock. There wasn't much risk of that happening in this six and a half gallon big mouth bubbler, but for the sake of example, I dropped firm cap directly onto the croissin of this legend of Lutra. It's optional, but I like to gently stir the wort with a sanitized spoon to help distribute the firm cap throughout the fermenter. When you do this, you'll see pretty much immediate results as the foam dissipates or is at least greatly reduced at the surface of the wort. Remember, this does not hurt, halt, or impede fermentation at all. You'll see the yeast still in suspension, chewing away at all those fermentable sugars. Firm cap will not affect the finished beer's flavor, appearance, 
or head retention. When fermentation is complete, the insoluble firm cap compound will settle out with the rest of your yeast and trube. If you want to make double sure, you can cold crash and or fine that beer, get everything completely out of solution, out of suspension, and then be sure to not pick up any of that trube when you then rack the beer to keg, bottling bucket, or secondary fermenter. Lastly, firm cap can be used to tame an overly energetic yeast starter. Surely, I'm not the only one who's created a volcano of foam swirling the starter as all the CO2 rushes out of solution through that narrow neck of the flask. Whoa, oh, <laughs> whoa, bloopers, holy moly. That can happen. I just love this outtake from a previous video we produced where the starter pretty much popped like a firecracker on our R&D brewer in the brew cave. I made a starter just for this video in a 1000 milliliter flask using our fast pitch canned wort plus 16 ounces of clean drinking water. Obviously a 2000 milliliter flask would probably be a better option here, but I wanted to push the volume limit just so I could show you what could happen. As you can see, adding the fast pitch and water alone kicked up a good bit of foam, but I'm also more concerned about the croisin that will form eventually during the starter's fermentation. Prevent this by adding just a single drop of firm cap into the one or two liter starter. Just a little bit will do since we're not talking about full gallons of wort here. Again, it will not inhibit the mini fermentation that is key to making a healthy active starter, but it will help make sure you don't have a small geyser of wort gush all over your countertop. After eight hours at room temp, upon swirling, the yeast starter that had no firm cap most certainly foamed up and out of the flask. The starter that did have firm cap added was swirled rather aggressively and barely kicked up any foam. Quick note, this is really only applicable to starters that are made with the swirling method on a countertop or table, as a yeast starter made on a stir plate should never foam over due to the constant agitation of the stir bar, releasing CO2 more slowly and consistently throughout the process. If you don't use fast pitch, but instead boil water and DME to make your starter work, you can also use firm cap here if you're worried about a small scale boil over on your stovetop. And there you have it four ways that firm cap can come to the rescue and save your brew day or save your fermentation. Firm cap is something I think everyone should have in their arsenal for fighting the good fight against what is often unexpected and unpredictable foam. Uh, with star sand, they say, don't fear the foam. In a lot of other scenarios, I say, do fear the foam and use firm cap to knock it down. As always, you can get firm cap at Northern Brewer. Check out the link in the video description below. And if you like product demo videos and FAQ videos like this out of Northern Brewer, we love doing them. We wanna keep the party going. Like, subscribe, and ring that notification bell so that you know when the next one drops.